floor back. I just, that's all I'm doing. I'm going to plan, we'll figure it out, and then we'll get cutting. I want to pull up some of these tiles, these old sticky tiles. This is slow. This is coming along nicely. I was trying to use this iron that I actually picked up for this job. It's just a little cheapy old iron. And my idea was to heat up the sticky tiles so they'd peel off easier. And it did work, but it was slow, smelly, and sticky. It left a lot of glue on the floor. So I gave up on that and I started scraping them off. This is actually a bucket tool for scooping out of buckets but it's all i had it's got a thin blade and it's working so much quicker and easier than the iron so good what i wasn't expecting to find under here is this patch so the floor has been obviously repaired and it goes pretty far and something else i'm noticing is right here you see a dark line and there's water damage here too you can see the wood's kind of dry rotted now, this tells me something. Between this and the plumbing that we found in that big wall, I can tell you that a sink used to be here and a kitchen sink. So this actually used to be the kitchen. When we bought the house, it was a dining room. So the old original kitchen used to be here. The sink leaked, rotted the floor, somebody replaced it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it back into the kitchen and we're gonna put the sink right back here. But instead of this wall, we're gonna turn it and put it this way because we don't have as much room as they had because we're gonna be pulling the bathroom this way. Remember, we need another 30 inches for that tub to fit in there. So uh, we'll be putting our sink along here and creating a galley kitchen. It's gonna be really cool. But now seeing this floor, seeing this patch, knowing that I have to cut the floor back 30 inches and we have other repairs like this heater vent that needs to be fixed. What I want to do is just pull up this floor. I'm going to pull up all these boards, all the finished flooring. Then we'll frame our new, we'll fix the subfloor. We'll frame our new wall for the bathroom. Then we'll try to use this flooring again. If we can get it up intact, we'll try to lay it back down. I really want to save it. It's not special. It's not unique. It's not even expensive flooring it's just cheap knotty pine or something similar but i'll keep it if i can so i got a big job here let me keep pulling these tiles off when i'm done we'll start on the floor the floor is stripped vacuumed actually looks okay
least. The subfloor is not rotten. Well, that's with hardwood. Pine floors usually go wall to wall. Oh. Probably because it's just generally easier to get long pine boards than it is long oak. Without ruining the groove. You need something to, to help seal up. Yeah. This looks pretty good. You can see all the rot and water damage extends only to this edge, which will be cut off. And this floor will be solid again. Here's more evidence of the old sink. You can see the two holes there. There's some more holes over here that are patched up. So probably a stove or a heater in this corner. And there was something right here too. Wonder how this kitchen was laid out. You can see this old outlet was added afterwards, and you can see where the wires come through right here. And they are thoroughly chewed up. What do you guys think? Not looking too good. Luckily, we don't have to use that anymore. So I've been evaluating everything that we're dealing with here, and I'm gonna try something tricky, but I think it's gonna give me a good end result. You can see this is where this floor is rotted, and I was gonna cut it back, but the finished floor starts right here. And if I cut it back to the finished floor, well, the finished floor is gonna be floating. I'd probably have to put a joist right here in the middle, and then I'd probably need a double joist so I can hook the old floor and the new floor coming together properly. Um, I just don't like that. What I wanna do is cut this old floor all the way back to this ex existing joist. So I'm basically gonna be cutting the subfloor out from under the finished flooring, you know, for about eight inches. You can see back here would benefit from it, here would benefit from it, because there's some spots where the floor is already hanging out and has no proper support under it. We also have on this side, an old heater vent that we're gonna be pulling down and that leaves a big hole in the floor. So if I cut this back to this joist and I slide my subfloor all the way over, it'll cover this hole, it'll fix all these gaps. And all I have to do is sister this with another two by eight for that subfloor to sit on top of. What makes it tricky is I don't want to move this finished floor. We want to save this floor even though it's not great. So we're going to keep it. So I have to take out this while keeping this intact.
Whoa! Didn't expect that to happen. All right. That's probably not good. Last night, I finished up cutting this floor back and it went pretty smoothly. I'm so happy with the progress right now. We have a perfect eight by eight square cut in the subfloor so that I can fit two pieces of plywood in here, hopefully perfectly if I did it right. Before I can get that plywood in here, I have to figure out the joists. You can see we're missing joists and some of these joists are in pretty rough condition. I've looked at them this morning and I have decided that while it doesn't hurt to leave them in, I think it's gonna be in my best interest to remove a couple of them that are just like this one is really twisted. It's really rotted on top. It's not gonna serve any purpose being in here. So if I can remove it without too much effort, it's just gonna be easier to put the new ones in without these in the way. Now, I think there's only gonna be a couple of nails holding this together, so we'll see. I'll try to cut these nails and hopefully pop it loose. Ashley and I removed the rotten old joists and you might notice that we cut these ends off. These joists actually extended, you know, another foot, 18 inches this way and it didn't do any good so we cut them off. So those are shorter and now we're working on straightening up these joists. Now this joist was pretty straight so I secured it in with some hurricane straps so it can't go anywhere. And we're gonna use this to straighten out all the others. I actually cut blocking from one of the old joists I ripped out to fit between here. And this joist is, you know, twisted. And we got a big gap down here. So I'm gonna pull it. Pull it straight against the blocking. Now I'm gonna secure it into the blocking. Let me get that down. So we'll secure it into the blocking, secure it into the beam, and it should stay there. Here we just screwed this in, should be secured now. Now we'll move on to the next one. How do they look? All right guys, we got all of our blocking screwed in. We have straps on our joists. Everything's secure and solid. It looks really good. Now again, this not only straightened these up, which were all so crooked, but it also gives me support for these cut off floorboards. So now we're ready for our new joists. So we're gonna sit the new joist right on the beam going across here. Okay, we have them just resting in place. Now I have to get them straight, make sure they're all lined up where they need to be, start getting them secured in. 
There is only one problem I'm seeing right now. You can see the new wood is smaller than the old wood. You can see it very noticeably here on some of these. So let me cut some shims to stick under these. We're gonna get them up flush with the old floor and then we'll get them hooked in. All right, just chop these up and let's get under the house. with symbols will go by the window. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to get these leveled up, straightened up, but they're in, they're, they're secured, and we are ready for plywood. Okay. So it's gonna slide under those. I don't want to complicate this, but I feel like it's going to be hard to get the tongue and groove locked together once it's under there, because I won't oh, be able to get it. Do it at once. Yeah, let's bring the other one in, yeah. hook them together, and slide the whole thing in. We should be able to do the rest if we can slide this under in one piece. Okay, ready? Get under it. Just take it slow and steady. Now what do we do? It's gonna go under there. We should just need to lift. Yeah, a little bit, tiny bit. We probably have to keep lifting it. We're close. Oh, you're there. Mm-hmm. All right, let me just... All right, we have this floor set. We marked it out. I'm going to throw some nails in it. So we just finished nailing this down. And for anybody that's concerned about nailing a subfloor, don't worry, I got three inch ring shank nails in there. It's not going to come up. They're not going to pop. This is going to last a long, long time. And I'm not a fan of gluing the floor to the joists. I have no concerns about not using glue. You don't need it, I don't use it. So now that we have that secured and in place, we have to come underneath here and you can see this, this is the edge of our plywood. You remember that we slid it underneath the finished flooring all the way over to this joist. Well, this is unsupported. So what we have to do is take one last joist and put it in here underneath. I'm drilling pocket holes every six inches along the top of this joist so that we can attach our subfloor to the joist from underneath. It's unconventional, but sometimes you have to just work with the situation you have. And I think this is gonna be a good solution to at least attach them together. So now that those holes are done, we're gonna put our screwdriver bit in here and get it hopefully put in place. I went through and I screwed this to the other one. They're sistered up tight. Now even though we're screwing through an uh, inch and a half material, I had my pocket hole jig set to three quarters of an inch because you got to think about the material you're screwing into. The floor is only three quarter inches thick. And now as much as I want to be done, there's still more to do. I have to create more blocking to put right under here, underneath the edge of my plywood where it meets the old floor. So the old floor is supported with these big blockings we put in. Now I'm just gonna cut some simple two by four blocking to span so that we have a nice tight floor where they meet. Ugh. Blocking is my least favorite thing because it's so slow. You gotta measure each one, cut a piece, put it in. Hopefully I can get Ashley over here. 
I'll throw her some measurements. She can do the cutting. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Well guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up. We're done. The floor is sealed back up. It's solid. We got all the blocking in. I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it's gonna be a lot better. All we have to do is finish nail that flooring, the finished flooring, down to our new subfloor that we slipped under there, and that'll be solid. And then we can start framing in the walls for our new bathroom. I don't know if this will come up in the comments or not, but we were just we were just discussing this, so I'll, I'll throw it out there. We've been discussing whether or not we should have torn up all the wood floor and replaced those boards. I know it probably doesn't look good on camera, kind of this rickety old board subfloor. It's not that great. It's kind of loose in some areas and uneven and lousy and it has holes in it that needs patching. But we're going to try to save it. We're trying to do two things. We're trying to stop spending so much. And two pieces of plywood can easily cost you $100. So you're looking at $100, another $100. You know, where does it end? You just keep dropping money. And the wood is still solid. It's still wood. It'll work. We're trying to just accept it as an old house. The floor is fine. What we're going to do is nail it down any loose boards. We're going to put some ring shank nails in it, secure it. And then we're gonna to try to relay the wood floor on top of it. And when that's done, it's gonna be super solid. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And then where do you end anyway? I mean, this is under the whole house, basically. Yeah. So it's gonna be fine for the kitchen. Yeah, so I think that's all there is to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. See ya.